Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. Today I'm going to go over two lessons. I'm going to go over lesson 7.2 and I'm going to go over lesson 7.3. So again, you guys are getting two for the price of one. Both of these lessons focus on the exact same strategy. You're going to be multiplying a fraction by a whole number. However, lesson 7.2 is strictly based on using models. In class, when I taught this lesson, we did a very brief section where we were using the fraction tiles, but because you guys won't always have action or access to the fraction tiles, in this video, I'm just going to be focusing on what you would do if you didn't have fraction tiles and how you can draw out the models for lesson 7.2. Then in the examples for lesson 7.3, lesson 7.3, you're still multiplying a fraction by a whole number, but this time we're going to talk about, well, how would you do that without models? If you chose not to use models or you did not have access to models or you did not know how to use a model to multiply multiply a fraction by a whole number, what would be the steps that you would take? So 7.3 will be based on the algorithm or the tech technical steps you would take to solve a problem when multiplying a fraction by a whole number. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples from each lesson, 7.2 and 7.3, and then I will come back and give you some closing thoughts for today's lesson. All right, here we have our first example, and this is going to be for lesson 7.2. We are going to model how to find three times three eighths. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna look at your problem and use the parts of it to figure out what it's telling you to do. So the first thing you're gonna do is look at your whole number. Your whole number is telling you that in terms of your model, you're going to create three holes. So there's hole number one, hole number two, hole number three that I've already drawn out. The next thing you wanna look at is you wanna look at your denominator. Your denominator here is going to tell you once you have your holes drawn, how many pieces do you wanna divide that into? So this is telling me take each of your holes and divide them into eighths. So I'm going to do that right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, that creates seven and eight. And I'm gonna do that for the other two holes. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I know that these are not perfectly equal because I'm drawing them, but technically speaking, if I had pieces, we wanna make sure that we know that these are representing three holes that have been separated into equal parts, but I don't want you to spend too much time trying to measure your lines and everything, just as long as you get the idea that they should, they represent equal parts. The next thing we wanna look at is our numerator. The numerator tells you now that you've taken your three holes and you've separated them into eight equal parts, in each of those holes, you're going to shave three eighths of them. So if these are divided into eighths, in each of them, I'm going to shade in three sections or three eighths of each. So I'm gonna do that. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's three eighths. That's three eighths. So I've shaded in three eighths of my whole three holes that I had to start with. Now to figure out what my answer is, I'm going to tell myself, well, how many pieces do I have shaded in total? I know that this is three, this is another three, that's another three. And I know that three times three is nine. So right now I have nine eighths shaded. And the reason why they're nine eighths is because I took these three holes and I divided them into these eighth pieces and I shade it three in each one. And so I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eighths shaded all together. So the answer to that question right now would be nine eighths, but we still have to go back to what we learned in the previous chapter and recognize that that is an improper fraction because my numerator is greater than my denominator. And we've already learned how to solve that problem. So I'm gonna take nine eighths, I'm gonna turn it on its side and divide and make it nine divided by eight. I know that eight can go into nine one time. One times eight is eight. 9 minus 8 is 1. So now I know that my whole number will be the whole number in my mixed number. My remainder will be my numerator. 
and my divisor will be my denominator because the denominator doesn't change. So the answer to three times three eighths is going to be one and one eighth. Okay, here's our second example. We're gonna take three fourths and we're gonna multiply that by the number two. And in this example, notice that your whole number is on this side of the multiplication as opposed to this side. That does not change how you're gonna complete the problem. That just means that that just happens to be where the whole number is in this particular case. So we're gonna go back to looking at each part of this problem and using what we're being told to do to solve it. So we have two holes. So that means we are going to draw out two whole pieces so that's whole piece number one. This is whole piece number two. That takes care of the whole number. Then we're gonna look at our denominator and our denominator is saying, you're gonna take your two holes and you're gonna divide them into four equal parts. So here's one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. I did that. Now I'm gonna look at my numerator and my numerator says, now that you've taken your two holes, and you've divided them into four equal parts. In each of your holes, you're going to shade in three-fourths of each. So let me use a different color marker. So I'm gonna shade in, this is one, two, three, and then one, two, and three. Now I need to look at my model and interpret what my answer is. I'm gonna remind myself that these have been separated into fourths, and then I'm gonna count how many fourth pieces did I shade? Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means three fourths times two is going to equal six fourths. And again, going back to what we learned in chapter six, we should recognize that I cannot leave my answer as six fourths because that is considered to be an improper fraction. So I'm going to take six fourths. I'm gonna turn it on its side and divide and make it six divided by four. Four can go into six one time. One times four is four. Six minus four is two. I'm gonna take those three numbers and I'm going to represent that as one and two fourths. I know that my fraction has two even numbers so that tells me that that fractional part is not in simplest form. And because I am a fifth grader that knows my multiplication facts and my basic division facts, I know that the greatest common factor between two and four is going to be two. So instead of one and two fourths, my answer is going to be one and a half. Here is your first example from lesson 7.3. So in lesson 7.3, the essential question was asking, how can you multiply a fraction and a whole number without making use of a model or without drawing a model? In the math lesson in class, they did show you the model and the algorithm. In this example or in this video, I'm only going to focus on the algorithm part because we just did a couple of examples with models. So the first thing that you want to do is when you are working with this is you're going to just tell yourself, as long as I know my basic multiplication facts, I should be totally fine. As long as I remember I don't wanna leave improper fractions as improper fractions, you should be fine. And as long as you remember how to put things in simplest form, you should be just fine. Those are all pretty easy things to do. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make it so that my four looks like a fraction, but does not change its value. So anytime you put any number, any whole number over one, you can create a fraction without changing its value. So instead of this saying four, I'm going to make this four over one, and then I'm gonna multiply that times seven eighths. I like to do that just so that I have consistency with this and that when I multiply, so that they look the same in other words. Then you just multiply straight across. Four times seven, is 28 and eight times one or one times eight is going to be eight. Still going back to chapter six where we learned that your numerator cannot be larger than your denominator because that is considered an improper fraction. I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna turn that on its side and divide because it's improper. Here's my division house and I'm gonna do 28 divided by eight. Knowing my basic multiplication facts, I know that eight can go into 28 three times, and that three times eight is 24, and 28 minus 24 is going to give me four. 
So I'm going to take all my remaining parts, create a mixed number from that. So my answer would be three and four eighths because both the four and the eight in the fractional part of my answer is it are even numbers. I know at the very least they're divisible by two, so I know it's not in simplest form, but I'm also really good with my multiplication facts, so I know that not Two is not the greatest common factor. It is a common factor, but it is not the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor between four and eight is actually four. And I know that four can go into four one time and four can go into eight two times. So my final answer is going to be three and a half. So that's your first example. Pretty easy. We'll do one more. All right, here's my second example from lesson 7.3. In this example, we are multiplying two thirds times five. So the first thing that I did is I rewrote it so that five appeared to be a fraction. So now it says two thirds times five over one. Remember, anytime you put a whole number over one to create a fraction, you are not changing the value. So we are good to go there. And then I'm just gonna multiply going across. I know that two times five is 10. And I know that three times one is three. So right now my answer is 10 thirds or 10 over three, but I also know that that is an improper fraction. So I'm gonna fix that by turning it on its side and dividing. So it's going to be 10 divided by three. I know that three can go into 10 three times and that three times three is nine and that 10 minus nine is one. So now all that's left for me to do is to take the different parts of that division problem and represent it as a mixed number. So my answer here is going to be three and one third. Both one and three are um, prime numbers. And so I know that that is in simplest form and there is nothing else for me to do in this particular problem. If you want it to be really sassy and check it, you can multiply three times three, which is nine plus one is 10 and you would get back to 10 thirds if you really wanted to be absolutely certain that you've done it correct. So those are the examples from both lesson 7.2 and 7.3. Again, they're not too terrible once you understand how to read the problem and what each part of your problem is telling you to do. Once you have that figured out, the hardest part is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my camera back around and give you guys some closing thoughts for this lesson. So those were your examples from lessons 7.2 and 7.3 and both, or actually I should say with the modeling lesson, just remember that when you are given a fraction and you are multiplying it by the whole number, the whole number tells you how many of those models you are going to make. The denominator tells you how many equal parts are you going to separate your models into and the numerator tells you how much of those models that have been cut into equal parts are you going to be shading so that you can come to the final answer of your fraction times a whole number. When you're using the strategies from lesson 7.3 where you're not really using a model at all and you're just using the algorithm, you're just gonna remember that you can take your whole number, turn it into a fraction by putting it over one because any number over one will retain the same value but allows you to put it in fraction form. Then you're gonna multiply your numerators, then you will multiply your denominators, and in both cases, you always wanna make sure that you are expressing your final answer in simplest form. So that's really it for those two lessons. I hope that the examples were helpful to you guys, and if they were, please give this video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and make sure you click the little bell next to the subscription button so that you are notified anytime I upload any new videos for you guys. Other than that, I hope that you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye everybody.